All right, so Trell and I are here, and we're gonna do a little behind the hunt of our recent uh, What Comes to Water films. So basically, we're just gonna do like a director's cut kind of thing. We're gonna walk you through the film, show you some highlights, talk about the backstory, and some behind the scenes. We'll extended cut in a way, and we'll expand on some things that we experienced on our Arizona over-the-counter cougar hunt we did. Oh yeah. Thank you. We had too much, do you think we had too much stuff? Your vehicle was... It was packed. Huh? It was like playing Tetris every time we had yeah. other things around. You know, Arizona's got this great late season over-the-counter opportunity for archery. And they're valid for either... What did you think about the music? This is something I always want to bring up when we see these films. Because like, people probably think they're just like stock mm -hmm. stock music. But like Mather, who is one of our main camera guys, does all the editing for this, makes all the music himself. Do you think he plays... I think he plays the banjo. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't you? Would it shock you if you found out that Mather was like a closet banjo player? He seems like a dude that would uh, play the banjo. First chance to hunt coos deer with my bow, really. That's a big buck. Uh, that's a big buck. How big do you think that buck is? Oh, that's a, that's it's a easy over 100, gotta be. Like yeah. 110, 106. That's really cool too when you go to like these small towns and you like go into some of these gas stations or grocery store and they care about hunters like this. I love small town America. Yeah, just like those little mercantiles. Mm -hmm. Giant world class cougar with my bow back in 2014. All I wanted out of this trip was for a trail to experience that same thing I experienced. is how fun it is, how cagey these animals are. They're always on edge. What's with the suspenders? <laughs> I wear them half the time, but I get comfortable. I like to pop them off. Yeah, when do you wear them? Like when you're hiking? When I'm hiking, yeah, because my, my pants, I always lose, my body just burns calories. <laughs> I'm really quite interested to see what comes to water. Mm -hmm. You'll put somebody on this side and somebody on this side. Yeah. How good was the weather? It's so nice. It's the cold in the morning, which is awesome. It wakes you up a little bit. Then you sit there and it's just perfect. Being in the shade, super comfortable. Being in the sun, it's actually a little too hot. Yeah. But nothing better to do in January than come out here this awesome weather and just makes you, you know, appreciate a January hunt. That was one of my favorite parts of the whole hunt. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a nice buck. Like, literally, I got up on top, looked over, I was like, boom, there's a buck. Was that like the first deer that you saw once you, you, you left? Yeah, and I was like, oh my gosh. I instantly dropped down through the BTX up, got my phone on there, and of, of course, the footage you can see right here, my camera is broken on the end, my old phone. Mm -hmm. And so it's horrible digit scale footage, but like that buck is a stud. I thought it was pretty good for what, for what it was. I mean, being that late, but yeah, that buck was a, a slob. But like, but like, he's up there and he never thought to come to water, even with all those other does. It like, wasn't yeah. ruddy. He was all by himself too. Yeah. I've had some, some folks ask me like after they've watched the film and they've seen that buck, like, oh, why didn't you guys go back and hunt, you know, spot and stock hunt that buck? Mm -hmm. And... He was kind of up on this little knob, and you've got these canyon, you know, ridges. real little finger ridges and like canyon bottoms. But the tops of those has got just enough like vegetation. It didn't ever really feel like, at least to me. I mean, I didn't think I didn't know if we could ever put that buck in a spot we could, you know, actually. And we we ended up bumping him, right? Yeah. The next morning we went in on him, and unfortunately, as maybe we drove a little bit too far down Probably that road did. too. But then when we started hiking out, I'm like, oh crap, there's a deer running up, and put the bounds up, and he's a lot bigger. Yeah. When we saw him the next day, like the digital scope footage did not do him justice. The mass on his beams. Yeah, they always look bigger it. going away, right? Yeah. Yeah, even even on a coos buck, they look big going away. I had the best peanut butter and jelly sandwich I've ever had today, I think. Today was just a great day. Get up every morning and make my kids' his lunches, so you, you gotta you work on your perfect ratio of peanut butter to you jelly. A lot of peanut butter and jelly practice. A lot of peanut butter and jelly practice. Yeah, head back to the big buck. Okay. You can't put too much jelly. It's gotta be enough, but not too much. It's a perfect, it's a ratio you gotta work at. There's like 10 heavily over here, that's it. Oh, really? Yeah. Can you tell which side of the border they're on? I'm pretty sure they're on the... Uh, the other side? Yeah, their side. <laughs> they're on the Mexican side. Yeah. One thing here, too, we'll touch on. We actually did see some people yeah. all across the border, too, and they were actually like, you don't know what they were doing. They were sitting there, obviously, glassing the border wall. Yeah, they were... You saw them in the BTX, yeah. right? Yeah, you call that thing the the eyes of God, eyes right? Of God. You can see everything. That's why, like, when I was up there, I was also was glassing. I'm like, I am looking way too far away. Suspenders again, yeah. Look at him hang. God, that's a long draw. Big boy bow. 
How long is your draw? It's over 32 inches. So it's 32. Yeah. Which is longer, your draw or your waist size? Which is bigger? <laughs> 30, 33 waist is pretty dang close. I'm quite surprised that nothing's come in. Like, no, okay. some dick bugs or something. No javelina, no kudamandi, no jaguars. <laughs> so you think people thought, thought it was serious and was saying jaguars? I bet, so, yeah. Probably. I don't think there's ever been any. Instantly, I was like, that guy doesn't have a tail. Yeah. Like, what's up with that guy? Yeah. Mountain lion? I, the only thing I could think of was a mountain lion. Trap, maybe? Maybe trap. But... Maybe it froze. I, I don't know how a coyote. I don't know how a coyote loses its tail, but yeah, coyotes are pretty wily. <laughs> the old fila. The old fila. Find a lot of shoes, huh? Find a lot of carpet shoes down there. Yeah, and that was like an actual, just actual like a shoe, like a yeah. running shoe. Found a lot. You find a lot of a, abandoned clothing in general, right? Yeah. Find a lot of backpacks, a lot of those black water bottles, but a lot of shoes. You also notice here I'm wearing a different bino harness. I'm a worst truck camper ever, or this is for uh -huh. a you know, little house we rented. But I forgot my bino harness that morning and then it has my inReach on it. So I'm borrowing uh, Logan's binos here. When you were uh, uh, doing your paperwork earlier, yeah, we were chatting and we were noticing how really excited you were instantly to uh, claim that tank. Did you steal the good spot? I tried. It didn't work out. I was I was trying to grab it. Yeah, I thought I, I was like, you know, you go over there. To new spot. I'm gonna go, to the I'm gonna go over here where this buck is like generally closer to, and hope it works out in my favor. It didn't, but yeah. but you know, yeah. I had to, your props, dude? I had I had to give it a go. Oh, Interesting. So this pond looks super, super good. There's a lot of tracks too down below. Yeah. I noticed you have a uh, scope cover. To me, again, see, so like if I can add something onto my weapon, bow, rifle, that's going to protect something of the most importance. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to do it. So I always keep a scope cover on my bow sight, just protect the pins. What what were you shooting for a second? The Fast Eddy uh, XL double pin. Two pin? Yeah. What? So if you're shooting a two pin and you're sitting like a water hole like this, like how do you set that up? Like what do you put it at? 30, usually 33. And then so my second pin, what's that, like 47, 45, mm -hmm. somewhere around there. That way I'm kind of covered. If something comes in really quickly, I know I can, you know, 30 out to whatever close distance. But if I have that second pin for the further right. shots. And if it's further to you, I probably have more time to dial. To dial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Just that is of, one thing about like hunting a water hole or like ambush style hunting. Like you, you do have the ability a lot of times to maybe mm -hmm. dial that to like a, yeah. a precise yardage, you know, based on where the animals are coming in. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't worth setting up to like this. I'm just like range, range, range. Yeah. The other day I try to like play game with myself. Like what was that range? And try to guess it and range again. One of the, probably the scariest things in my life just happened. Uh, Logan and I are just sitting in this little water tank, waiting for a coos to come in. All of a sudden, we hear this big branch like scrape behind us. So we both look at each other quickly. I turn around, and there's a whole group of illegals. What was it? Like, what was the initial feeling? Like, what's your first thought? First thought I was going to kill a deer. With big backpacks on. It sat off his body about like that, probably about like that tall. Yeah. And I could just hear him. Talking, I can't understand what they're saying. They sit down, no joke, 10 yards behind us, we're on this little dike, 10 yards on the other side of the hill. And both Logan and I look at you like, what the F do we do right now? Yeah, and it's just the unknown, right? It's the unknown. Like, are, is it just a family of people and they're just nice? Or is it some guys who are out to do some bad stuff? Obviously, they probably don't want to get in trouble because yeah. they're doing stuff too, but it's like the unknown. Do they have guns? Are they whatever? I don't have my sidearm on me. I forgot my inReach today. And so he's like, hey, inReach Randy right now. And I'm like, Logan, I'm wearing this bino, your bino harness and I forgot my bino harness that morning has my inReach on it. So I had nothing. Like and I had a yard sale going on of gear. I had like my BTX laid out, I had water bottles, like all this gear to sit there. So we can't just like 
grab and leave and just like leave my stuff there, yeah. or, like try to pack it up, like they'll hear us. I did see four of them at first, but by the talking and how many were, we assumed there was like eight. Okay. You know, who knows sure, how many, yeah, yeah. but like we've seen there's quite a few people and all of a sudden heard this really sweet bird sound. Mm -hmm. Like totally, like they knew what they're doing. All of a sudden these guys went, Whoosh! stop talking. And we're both like, we're dead. So I turned back over after that and I saw one of the guys climb up on the dike like five yards from me. We both lock eyes and I don't know how I thought of doing this or thought the easiest way to do it. I gave him the A-OK -okay sign, I gave him a thumbs up and a mouth like, you're OK. He returned the same thing, thumbs up, A-OK, -okay, and then gave me a smile. We both understood each other like, he gave you, you can do what you want to do, we're going to do what we're going to do, we're he OK. He gave you the thumbs up, huh? Yeah. That's when I, I turned to him, I was like, I think we're OK. I mean, you hear stories, you know, like e even in camp, we had guys in camp, you know, guys that work for Arizona Game and Fish, you know, and talking to those guys, they've hunted that area and, and on the border for a number, you know, 20 plus years. And even in talking to them, um, you know, they relayed stories of like finding, you know, cubes, you know, bales of coke. They, they, had, they saw the powder. And yeah, stuff. saw the powder. Um, you know, he said one time he saw a guy uh, drop like a 50 pound bale of, you know, marijuana and, you know, ditch it because they'd ran into each other. You just, I mean, there's like, those things exist, you know? You, you just, you don't know. But yeah, this is a super cool area, and we did start seeing more bucks. A lot of bucks. And we, I mean, it would have been really tough to spot and stock in it just because it was so thick. Mm -hmm. It was really thick. Especially as those deer kind of started to move up into those saddles. We never really saw them stop and hang out. They never no. bedded down. I never like, did see one bedded. Mm -mm. That's why it was like spot and stock was like, we can't, we don't have a play. Stock, yeah. Which would be pretty tough in this stuff because there's a lot of rock and vegetation, but hopefully we can find a water hole. There was no water. No water. Couldn't find it. Somewhere. Know. There's so many deer in that spot, though. Yeah. I think I have a mule deer buck, which would be the first buck we've mule deer buck we've seen. Yeah, that was a decent mule there. A fair species. <laughs> Why didn't we hunt that buck? All of a sudden, we see these couple guys in pickups come looping all around, and we were trying to figure out too where water was. So maybe there was water up there. But yeah, these guys looped around us, came up the little drainage, parked the truck, started hiking back over towards it, and the deer just went. I ain't opposed to uh, sitting water today. This is a completely different part of the unit. We drove we clear. Drove, I mean, this exploring. is this is real south, huh? Mm -hmm. You gotta love a bellow and cow, huh? It's like the uh, the soundtrack to a western big game, huh? Yeah. On public land, you know. I like your emphasis too, though, in this. Like, the like... real deal. <laughs> real deal. And we never had a deer come in that night. Never did, not one. I don't even know what day it is. It's Monday, I know that, but I don't know how many days we went out. So when I said that, I don't even know what day it is. It's like one of my very favorite parts of hunting is like when you get to a stage in your hunt where you haven't even, you haven't thought about like responsibilities at work. You just, you're disconnected. You're just out hunting. We didn't take like your traditional pop-up ground blinds. We just brushed in ground blinds. So you brought like, what with you to do this? Yeah, I brought um, just like a grizz saw. So it's a little outdoor edge grizz saw, which is a tiny little handheld saw. I drew on that buck. Oh really? Yeah, he, um, he walked up behind, see this big ocotillo right here? Yeah. He walked up behind it and stood right behind it, completely broadside. And I, I did draw on him. He was 35 yards. Talk to me about that tree right there, Trail. Oh, yeah. That this this dead one right here. That one's brutal. <laughs> you know, 30% of the deer that came in tucked themselves right behind that dead tree. So many deer come in. So many deer that day. I was at one point, I'm like, are these deer watering like two and three times a day? And I'm getting like the same group of 12 because there were literally so many deer. Like there was never more than I would say 10 minutes the entire day where we didn't have deer coming in. It was just like a parade of deer. Yeah, Kudu Monday. It was awesome. We saw a few. Mm -hmm. um, I've been wanting to shoot one of these guys for so long. Yeah? Man, oh. I wish you'd have got the chance. They're cool. 
This one came in all alone, so you know we heard all alone, big mail. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm really impressed with the size too in the bottom. Back yeah, the yeah, that's a good mail. Yeah, and all the other ones that we saw were in groups, which I guess they yeah. call troops, right? Yeah, Almost troop. like you would a monkey. Coos monkey. A coos monkey. That's why they call them coos monkeys. And they do have a giant tail. Giant tail. So long. Raccoon footprint. Looks like a weasel. Mm -hmm. Looks like an anteater. Yeah, face is long like an anteater. Got some gnarly teeth. Oh, I yeah. I believe me at first. No. They got some yeah. good teeth. I was like, teeth? What? what? Yeah, but they got great big long canines. They're cool. Out tonight and should make a nice little, little cape. I don't know how to spell Kudamundi. <laughs> I think I asked you when you got back, yeah. when I met you, I said, how do you spell Kudamandi? And you, you nailed it right away. Yeah. They're difficult little things to spell. Shout out Kudamandi. Oh yeah? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. I totally forgot this. This is another, this one, is another one of my favorite stories. Oh, yeah, what did, what did you have happen this day? Also, this guy comes walking right up. And he's wearing the exact same clothes these other people were wearing, just like raggedy clothes. like. Cut off everywhere, his pants were all cut up. And again, wearing those typical backpacks we kept seeing everywhere, those little cheap mm -hmm. backpacks. And it was a big backpack again. You know, longer hair, and it's an older guy. He comes walking right up to me, and I was like, trying to like wave, I'm trying to startle him, but he's like coming right to me. So yeah. I think this is when I have to say something and kind of startle him. So I'm like, hey, hey. He's like, whoa, whoa. He's like, and then he's like, I'm glad you're not pointing anything dangerous at me. I'm in my little like, you yeah, know, stick blind. Stick blind. And my, you know, my bow sitting there, and, uh, so I'm just like, I have to talk to this guy. I'm like, sure. hey man, what are, you, what are you doing around here? He's like, oh, you know, I, I live in these canyons. You know, sometimes I go north, sometimes I go south, but I never go to town. It's way too hot there. <laughs> so I'm like, is that a metaphor for, yeah, you know, something town. going on? Right. So then he sits there and starts like, you know, pulling out stuff out of his backpack. It ended up being four of those black water jugs. Mm. So I'm like, okay, this guy's just getting water. Mm -hmm. Then the weird thing is he's like, he's like, kind of my stick. And I'm like, but I don't. I don't know what you're saying. Like, what do you mean? Can I, can I stick? He's like, that stick right there, that's mine. So it was just this long, like, stick and it had like a little hook on the end of it. Yeah, the shepherd's yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, yeah, I use this to get the water out of the middle of the pond because it's better because he doesn't, he doesn't filter. Mm -hmm. So he hooks his water bottles on there and reaches out into the pond and then dips his water bottles and he filled up all four water jugs. And I know this too, which is really interesting about this guy, is he was wearing flip flops. Like the oh, little like oh. little like thong flip flops, yeah, yeah. and they were just like on their last leg, like destroyed. And it's like it was cold in the morning. Yeah, and like what are you doing hiking around in the desert? Everything's sharp. Everything's yeah, out to really, get you. Yeah, thorns. And everything. just flip flops. And then he's like, uh, asked me about like how do you get deer out? And we had this little conversation. Back on mine, I'm like, let's wrap this up. Yeah. I want a deer hunt. Time to move. Yeah, and it's like prime time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then he's like, oh, I just, you know, you are so nice. I've haven't met a really nice person in a long time. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, this guy really does just like, what does he, he do out here? He's lonely and he yeah. com need company. Yeah, so like he filled up his black water jug with water and he's like, I just wanted to say, I wish you the best. I hope you have a really great, really great time. He's like, I'm just going to go over here. I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah, and did he just go down the canyon? Just, he just went out of the canyon and left me. You never know what you're going to run into, huh? No. Yeah, that was wild. All by myself, too. What's going to happen? I've had people ask me like where we stayed. So we stayed in... Uh, like a little, I don't know, what a house, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. So it was an Airbnb yep. that uh, Randy in mm -hmm. Arizona Game and Fish was the couple guys from Arizona Game and Fish were there. Um, we had a couple other guys that were in and out of camp too that were also hunting. Yep. But man, it was a it was a sweet place to stay. Oh. It was it was fun camp life. I don't do many hunts like that. No, and you probably don't either. Mm -hmm. Most of the hunts that I do are you know on my own with my my backpack or. Yeah. Um, you know, with Neville and most of it's backpack hunting. So this was kind of cool to, to go back to camp at night. Yeah, again, it's just the hunting, it's about the camaraderie, the friendships you have there. And it's like that whole, everything about this made a really sweet hunt. Yeah, it was fun. We actually extended our hunt by about a half day. I mean, we were supposed to be gone that morning. I was committed that day to, you know, any, any legal buck that came in, I was going to try to get a chance at it and, and harvest it. Most of the deer we saw was not at light. No. It was between, I would say, 10, 10, 10, yeah, 10 to 3, maybe, somewhere in that neighborhood. I feel like they get scared from their own shadow. They kind of do like antelope do when they come in. So an antelope, like hesitation they thing? try to bait you into moving. So they'll, like, lower their head to water, give you the opportunity to, like, try to, you know, draw your bow or move or something, and then they'll pick their head up and look at you to try to bust you. But antelope do that all the time, and these kind of do that, too. It 
is crazy how he got up that hill. Yeah, it smacked him, huh? Yeah, tipped him over. It definitely hit him. <laughs> Man, he is a little guy. <laughs> they are little. His bodies are so tiny. You could literally just pick them up and move them around. Yeah, I. A lot of people, you know, they'll they'll take the whole deer out, right? Take it out whole. We had guys back at camp that had killed deer, and, and I would have too, but we were headed straight north. So I just was like, I'm gonna. And I was trying to extend my hunt as long as I could. Landscape. You had a buck come in though? Yeah, it was not like a medium buck, I guess, when I put my bios up. He's like a. Oh, like that one? Let me ask you, like, how, and I'll, I'll, I'll respond to you, but, like, how do you feel about, like, sitting water versus spot and stock? Like, does it, I mean, some people be like, oh, you, you know, you didn't spot and stock, set water. Like, do you, it's what, still a good, it's still a hunting tactic, and it still takes a lot of patience mm -hmm. to do. And it's, and one side of the thing, it's like, when you're sitting water, and you watch them come down, your adrenaline is just flowing. But I could easily sit water. I have no problem doing yeah. it. Because I know it's, such, it's a good tactic. And it was so dry down there. Mm -hmm. And it was literally, I mean, we never saw deer in a position where we could spawn stock. We never put them to bed or anything like that. Yeah, so. I think it's just, and it, and ultimately, it's just like a value judgment, right? Like, do you, you know I mean? Do you place value in, you know, pride essentially in spot and stock? Sure. Yeah, great. If that's like for you, I say go for it. Like, I don't mind sitting water at all. Mm -hmm. That's funny that you say, like, I actually feel more collected. Mm -hmm. I, I I feel bet. like I have way more control. Like, I know the yardage. I can pick my opportunity to draw my bow. I just feel like spot and stock, man, my nerves are just mm. pounding. And, like, I have to make every step just so, which is great. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. It's a fun challenge. But, man, that really gets my nerves pounding. He made a full body turn by the time the arrow got to him. Overall, just, like, one of a really fun fun hunt like a yep. genuinely fun hunt mm -hmm. it's one you can do every single year and like i said you can come back from it and it's still a win when you don't take something because you like we learned so much stuff on this hunt even yeah just hanging out having fun so like i took a lot of things away like you know my body position and figuring out where i need to sit in the ground blind like all that right. yep well, man it was fun i hope we get to do it again next year mm-hmm you almost got the trifecta too. I almost. I think next year I'm gonna to try to pull off the uh, the Arizona triple. Is it the, the, triple crown. Yeah, triple crown. Kudamandi, Havelina, and uh, Kuzder. I think that'd be a, a really a fun trip. Mm -hmm. Next year. Next year.